Now, since this is our wrap-up session, we're supposed to wrap up the month. Okay, yeah. Okay. So we spoke to... Uh, first, we did negative one, which was just the two of us talking. About random... About pretty random stuff. Yeah, we spoke about three things. Uh, Toxoplasmosis. That was the last one. Scholarships. Schol- okay, yeah. And what was the first one? I can't remember now. How we met, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> 1C represent. <laughs> <laughs> People find that really amusing. <laughs> Guys, 1C doesn't mean we went the last class. There were eight classes, okay? Third class out of eight is still okay. <laughs> you, look, you look worse defending it. You should say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so leave it for future I need to episode. defend one C, man. No, man. Come on. Just I was it. in C for the rest of secondary no, school. No, you weren't. You went to B. Oh, I went to B. <laughs> <laughs> I went to B in form <laughs> two. Sorry, my bad. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I was in B. Um, so that was negative one. Then we did um, Samuel, right? We did Samuel. Samuel was just a fantastic episode. Uh, check that out. A lot of people uh, really, really like Samuel because he's completely crazy. <laughs> and there are more crazy stories about Samuel that we have yet to oh, talk about. I can think of so many. There's <laughs> so many. The dude is psycho. Some incriminating. No? <laughs> yeah, he's really... But he's a genius. He really is a genius though. Jeremy, don't look at mm. like that. Genius is very subjective. <laughs> <laughs> When I call him a genius, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the day, to be honest. And we had so much of fun. But of course, we were laughing so much. Jane had such a horrible time editing. <laughs> so we learned another thing that day. Uh, like, chill on the laughter. And then right after that, we had some... Uh, eh, no, we had... had Aaron, which we Aaron, didn't which didn't work out. He'll, he'll be coming back. Yeah, we've got him uh, scheduled for next week, actually. Mm. We're going to record. And then week after that was... Samantha. Samantha. Which was also, I really enjoyed that conversation. It was a little bit more serious. But again, we spoke about some really tough topics. Yeah. And we kind of tried to figure our way through it. Maybe we didn't even reach a conclusion because... I, I mean, we all think we all reached different kind of conclusions. Mm. But there was some consensus about how wanting to have more conversations. Conversations are probably good, that kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. Maybe we, the only thing we were still trying to figure out was to what, where should those con- conversations happen? Mm. We all said like, we shouldn't just cancel people. We should engage. But how that engagement manifests is another question. That was what we were like trying to figure out. Yeah. Like Samantha was saying like, you know, she has experiences with unsavory people and she didn't call them out. She spoke to them directly. Mm. That's like one way you can think about it. Yeah. You know, it doesn't apply in every scenario, but something interesting to think about. Mm. Then after that, <clears throat> we did a Terrence Store, which we are releasing tomorrow. Terrence also another fantastically interesting mm weird, uh, <laughs> odd, intelligent, funny, uh, yeah. you know. Th- this it was a fun episode. The perfect, you know, that's the kind of people that we want to talk to. Mm. And we had such a great time. We had a bit of problems with the sound though. So, uh, we apologize. Audience, audiences should bear with us as we describe our... It's our funny pain. that we are apologizing <laughs> for, for it now because they would listen to Terrence one first. One week, then they'll listen to this. Yeah. So, so like, it's like a retrospective apology. <laughs> <laughs> we apologize for what you have listened to already. Don't think about it too hard. <laughs> <laughs> but again, someone uh, super cool. So, um, the past month we've done this. Uh, Jeremy, any takeaways? Anything you've learned? Anything that surprised you? Or I mean, we've talked about things... I mean, I think the one thing we come back to is probably cancel culture mm. and how that really affects the world. We didn't really talk so talk that talk about that so much with Terrence. Yeah. But we've had discussions about it and like trying to think about how how we really perceive reality mm. given social media. You yeah. know, some people do pour their lives into social media. It is a way for them to define themselves. I've sort of like this is this podcast has been an interesting way for me to reflect on that. Hmm. And we come to the conclusion that like nobody, nobody should be investing their lives like like to act like there are life or death stakes on social media. Hmm. Because there is a world out there in which you can engage with that has more material consequences. Mm, yeah. mm, mm. So that's that was my thinking on that. One of the things that f- from all our conversations that really stood out, there's something that like kind of um struck a chord with me was something you said the distinction you made between intentions and, and actions, con- and, and, actions. Mm. and that's helped me orient myself a little bit better oh so th- uh, that one a colleague a colleague of mine pointed out that I, I borrowed so I take no credit <laughs> for that one <laughs> yeah I mean that's fine uh, that's fine but it, it, again in the course of conversations we share ideas mm. and then you're like okay yeah that's a good way to look at things mm-hmm. right and I'm sure even the person you got it from probably it's not a uh, uh, he's the most offline person though it was really interesting to get it from him 
Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's really interesting. Yeah. So so the the thing is, um, it has helped me in the way that when I look at something, it I automatically I can like can, uh look at it and like, okay, is this an idea, and is this a or is this a conduct? Mm. And in both categories, there's still a further discussion to be had. Yeah. But differentiating the two helps me a lot in like how am I gonna like you mm. know deal with this? Yeah. Because with ideas, you can be a little bit more. I want to say ideas can be dangerous as well. Yeah, no but it, you would engage ideas differently with how you engage conduct. Yeah, you know, and and that has um, really helped me a lot. Hmm. So that's pretty cool. I also have this thing I wanted to share with you. Your own reflections on it. Eh? Not a reflection, but I saw a quote <clears throat> because I actually I was preparing for the our God conversation, <laughs> right? And I was like trying to uh, look back at some of my. Um, stuff that I saved in the past. Then there was this really cool quote uh, by Seneca. Uh, Seneca is a Stoic uh, philosopher mm. and Stoicism is, I mean, it's hard to categorize it but if I were to really, really, really simplify it to its bare bones, it's basically, um, the idea is to have a good life, you'll be one with nature. And to be one with nature means uh, to live a life of virtue. Now, you can get into a, a lot of it. Lah. But okay. the idea is the power lies in your you. Mm. That external things uh, should not affect you. So, the, you know, the word, the root word stoic, it basically means people who don't really, uh, they don't get affected by things that happen to them. Right. Okay. The ideal perfect stoic <laughs> would be like, he, even his parents would pass away or his child would pass away and he would be in complete control of his emotions. That that is the ultimate stoic, right? Yep. And there are parallels with Buddhism as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that the level of detachment. Oh, right. right. Detachment from the material world yeah. and that kind of thing. Okay. So Seneca was talking about anger. And then he says this, like this I, I quote, huh? quote, Anger is a short madness, for it is equally devoid of self-control, regardless of decorum, forgetful of kinship, obstinately engrossed in whatever it begins to do, deaf to reason and advice, excited by trif- uh, trifling causes, awkward at perceiving what is true and just, and very like a falling rock which breaks itself to pieces upon the very thing which it crushes. Now, I'm not saying that all anger, and I don't think Seneca would say that as well, that all anger is bad. You know, mm-hmm. of course, there are right, there's righteous anger. Yeah. But anger is such, it can be self-consuming. Mm. You know, and if it's not directed, it, it really can consume everything. Like, and the, the, my favorite part is that he mentioned it, it'll be um, enchanted with trivi- uh, trifling things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was something like, yeah, I see that now. When people get so upset, they don't just get angry at the root problem. They get angry at everything. They want to take everything mm. with them. You know? So, again, something that like, it really resonated with me because of the conversations that we've been, we've been having. And it does describe a lot of the way... US liberals have carried out their cancel culture. Yeah. The needing to... I don't know if it's to purge their ranks. Yeah. But it is animated by this kind of anger that doesn't seem to be restrained. There's no like sort of rhyme or reason to it. And kind of it's so funny because from an outside person looking in, it's so self-destructive. Yeah. You're destroying yourself from within and you can't even see it. You know, well, everybody probably... is just like trying to find, you know, something in someone. Mm. You know, and it's just a bit silly. And that's where, and I, I, that's the problem. And I don't think they will even accept this, but that's the advantage that Republicans have. Because they, you can argue, they have this, um, not image, but they are rooted in tra- so-called traditional values or Christian v- values or whatever, right? But because they have a, a baseline that they all, they have, all of them have to adhere to. So they kind of all have these basic principles that they follow. Whereas with, liberals on the extreme left there's no like baseline everything is up for grabs so it, it becomes very subjective and so everybody is just looking to rush on that moral high ground and claim it mm, I wouldn't I wouldn't go into like the principle I say it's the this we, sh- we should do another should not do this on this podcast but Jeremy says this every week <laughs> yeah I know because this could be another episode <laughs> of a lot of things um, but yeah, the history of the institutions mm. are pretty inter- uh, is what some is something that's worth exploring a bit more because it's the nature of incorporating different groups. The re- when the Republicans seem to have a very fixed set of interest groups they incorporate, mm. you know, these are conservatives, the evangelicals, uh, 
you know, cons- I mean, billionaires in certain industries. The Democrats, on the other hand, had decided to go down this cultural agenda where they bring in, they, they deliberately bring in groups that are different, right? And that creates, that creates a different kind of politics, mm. you know? You could argue that Republicans also have blacks and Latinos, but the way they are brought in is different. You know, yeah. Democrats will tell them, you are coming in as a black person to have a black, so that there is a black voice rather than another liberal voice. So like there's, there's a lot of this, the nature of their coalition building is more, is more instructive of how they landed up in the modern context than principles, I would think. Mm-mm. Yeah. I mean, it almost seems like a challenge of identity versus values. Is that a good way to... I don't think so. I think it was... I think you could go into the history of how like uh, the, Clin- the Clinton had to abandon, you know, decided to abandon the social justice, the real, as in economic justice agenda mm. in favor of corporatism mm. and hence had to compensate for that. They had to build a new base, right? Because the workers were not on their, work- workers were not on their side in the same way anymore. So they had to compensate by having a cultural base. Mm. So this goes into the history of the Democratic Party, the way the way it's been structured, the way it's been changed through the decades. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Again, this is something uh, we can't... We, we haven't shouldn't. even started on the yeah, main topic yeah, yeah. yet. <laughs> but just one more last thing that really kind of struck me through the process of doing uh, this podcast, talking to these people and putting the content out there. Mm. I realized like how afraid I was to put something out there <laughs> Not to be like called out or anything like that. That's actually one of the things that I'm not <laughs> really concerned about. To my detriment, maybe. maybe. I think this is going to backfire on me one day. Maybe. Uh, Jamie is trying to keep me in check. But afraid <laughs> of, I guess, like any endeavor or pursuit, you want uh, validation from your peers. Mm-hmm. You want validation from the community. Because that's a good way to evaluate whether something is worth anything, I guess. Yeah. But that's not the only way you can evaluate a, 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 a product. There are a lot of artists, uh, poets who released, like, wrote or, or painted amazing things only for it to blow up after they died. Yeah. Right? People rejected <laughs> it while they were alive. So maybe, like, 300 years from now, Ruma Roy is going to yeah, be... Hopefully, it's not 300. <laughs> la. Maybe we'll see some of the proceeds in 20 years. La. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> At least before we die, guys. Yeah. I'd like to see some of that money. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I realized, you know, there was such a fear of failing. And that's a product of the times we live in. You put something out there for everybody to consume yep. instantaneously, you only, it's do or die almost. And we've lost that ability to mess up, be bad, screw up and become better. Mm-hmm. Because, say for a select few who have the natural abilities to on the get, you know, from the get-go to do it amazing, amazingly or, or fantastically, most of us have to screw up and improve. Like yeah. our negative one episode and now is actually really different already. Yeah. If imp- I, I hope, hopefully, so yeah. hopefully, I would hopefully like to say we've improved. improved. <laughs> but, you know, so I, I realize now, I guess, in a weird way, I mean, it's commonsensical, but as you do it, then you realize, um, yeah, getting feedback is important. But also, don't be afraid to mess up. It's okay if it's a bad episode. You know, you don't have to take it deleted or, you know, if people don't like it, it's fine. Mm-hmm. The important thing is you learn. And if you improve, then those episodes are justified because every step was just you moving forward. Yeah. There's no bad episode. There's a learning episode. You know, however right. cliche. <laughs> Actually, no one says that. But you know, there's sentiment. <laughs> it la. can be yours. La. <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> there's no uh, mis- mistaken steps. There are only steps. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We've got to okay. work on that. <laughs> uh, we'll leave it to, uh, uh, what's the good stuff up guys? Robin Sharma? Or? I don't know. Uh, 